Um, hey everyone, uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming today, um, especially family and friends. Um, there's a big gathering today and um, I, I thank you all. Um, it's a proud moment in my life um, to, to put on the red and green jumper and for me today to announce my retirement is, um, is something that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy about and you know, I'm, I'm proud of what I've achieved in the game. And, you know, um, I can't thank um, enough people for it. I love to thank, you know, my mum, dad, sister, my um, beautiful fiance Faith, and the five kids, um, Jade, Jalen, Nakia, Honey, and Anthony. Um, they've been a, a tremendous help through my career. And um, I also like to thank, um, you know, my teammates that have been there along the way, especially the boys that are standing behind me. Um, the coach, Madge, Richo, CEO, um, everyone that's been a part of my footy journey um, through back to Alexandria Rovers days uh, when I first started my footy. Um, it's been a, you know, it's been a remarkable ride. 13 years at the top level, um, 200 games. Um, so it's something that I never thought I'd do in my career. Just I'm um, lucky enough to play one game, but you now I've got 230 something. So you know, it's something that's that can hold my head. You know, held pretty high, so um, yeah. And today's I'm launching my um, foundation, Nathan Merritt Foundation. So that's the next chapter of my um, career, and that's going to be helping um, young youth, Indigenous youth, um, achieve their dreams. And you know, um, going and the ones that face adversity and try and help them set their goals and you know face life challenges that they put in front of them. So um, you know, hope, hopefully I can you know move on to bigger and be better things after footy. And that's going to be it. I'd now like to pass over to Rabbitoh CEO Shane Richardson to speak on behalf of the South City Rabbitohs. Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we stand on today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to Elders past and present. Um, I want to thank you all for coming here today. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the, the representation from the players today with uh, Sam, GI, uh, Johnny Sutton, Adam Reynolds, the coach Michael Maguire, the chairman of our board, Nick Pappas, is here today representing the board. So uh, we take this day as a very, very important day in the history of this club. Um, I think it's, it's a really incredible feat what Nathan's been able to, to do in his life uh, so far. Uh, 237 NRL games for anybody is quite remarkable. Um, it's the second most by any player in the history of this club and the first most is standing behind him and John Sutton today, the club captain. Um, to score 146 tries, um, to, to, to become the leading try scorer in the history of South Sydney, beating Benny Waring this year is an amazing feat. I think especially when you consider the sides that uh, Nathan played at in, in, in his early days and nothing against them but they certainly weren't the quality of side that maybe Benny had in his day uh, playing for South. Uh, Nathan was outstanding in, in, in so many ways, uh, not just scoring those tries, but I think in a lot of ways uh, giving South Sydney hope. So it's a, it's a very, very big day for him. I think also he's had 154 tries in his career and he's won the George Piggins medal as a winger, which is quite an amazing task. I think one of the big things in 2004 when I came to the club and I went out to the uh, football stadium and I saw this... Uh, young indigenous winger scored four tries against us in second grade and I said who the hell is he and he said he's actually a South Junior and he's left us and next year we're able to bring Nathan back to the club and continue on the journey where he's gone today and I think with Nathan Merritt's return to the club and John Sutton showing the character he did to stay with the club was the beginning of the turnaround for this club to where we are today so we have to I think we need to acknowledge that as well. The important part of Nathan though over that period of time is not only his loyalty to this club but the fact that he's also grown as a leader, grown as a leader on and off the field. Uh, his involvement in our South Cares program has been outstanding. His involvement in the Redfern community, Indigenous community and community in general has been outstanding. I've seen him grow from a, a player who didn't really want to talk much in front of people at all to somebody who constantly addresses classes and kids in many different forms, forms uh, with our South Care program, our Indigenous um, um, school to work programs, uh, etc. And at every time he's grown every minute of the day in those roles. And uh, we certainly want to, to see that continue. I think today is all about the next phase of Nathan's life. Nathan's an amazing uh, role model for Indigenous and all kids in the Redfern community. 
Uh, you know, he's a, he doesn't drink. A, uh, if he does, it's not very much at all. He's a non-smoker. He's a tremendous athlete in his own right. He believes in his people. He believes in what he's doing. And most importantly, he's never wanted to leave this community. He's always wanted to be part of it and stay to it. We, uh, we owe Nathan Merritt a huge debt as a football club. And today is the beginning of the new journey for him and his foundation, which will be backed by the NRL, South Cares, Aboriginal Health, Tribal Warrior with Shane, his brother-in-law, and his manager on today. I acknowledge you're here as well today. But I just think that all the greatness that Nathan has uh, gained on, done on the football, the way he's led this club back to where it, where it should be today, I think at the end of the day, the next 20 years of his life is all about what he gives back to his community. And we're so proud of Nathan and the foundation and what they're going to do. Thank you. Shane, I'd now like to pass over to, to Shane Phillips to speak about Nathan and also the Nathan Heritage Foundation. So as I'm sure for a lot of the community here and his parents who are here and his, and his family, um, Nathan's been our hero for, for a long time and a great role model to our community. But something Nathan has probably undervalued and other people haven't, have as well as what sort of asset Nathan can, could be because his brand and who he is as a person. So. The Nathan Merritt Foundation is something that we're, we're going to launch soon and you'll, you'll hear about it a little bit further down the track, but it's establishing from an idea of Nathan's and it's a, a gap in the market which no one is actually focused on. So Nathan will make a big imprint on a lot of athletes, Indigenous or non-Indigenous, down the track. Um, he knows he's thinking outside his career that he's making a new step towards the next chapter in his life. And it's 100% uh, it's serious. You'll see a very good product which is going to be put Nathan Merritt up into the big end of town where he should be in the corporate world. So I'm very proud to be part of um, you know, uh, this part of it and I'm proud of Nathan as well as being his brother-in-law. I grew up with his father. Um, we'll see some great things from Nathan Merritt like we've seen for a long time already and um, we're excited. So we're hoping people in NRL South stay involved in it. We'll have a connection and um, Nathan will be um, available to sort of um, work in some partnerships with us. Thanks very much, Shane. We're happy now that... <laughs> now happy to open the floor to, to any questions from the media representatives here today. Thank you. Must be emotional. Yeah, it's uh, pretty emotional, but um, you know, it's all careers got to come to an end, and you know, mine's coming this year, and you know, it, um, big focus for me to, is to enjoy it and just embrace it and. Um, they go and support the boys this week. Was there any thought of continuing on in England all that? Uh, uh, no, probably not, eh? No, definitely not. Um, it's too cold over there for me. When did you actually make the decision? To um, uh, pretty much early in the year. Um, the decision for me was pretty easy. Um, you know, just... Um, just footy-wise, um, body-wise, just you know, my, it's taken its toll, and um, you know, I just didn't think I could, you know, mentally do it again, uh, go through another preseason, and and do all the training, and you know, preparing for games each week, week in, week out, and you know, that that pretty much done it for me. How did you feel watching the highlights on the screen? Um, but yeah, it's um, it's enjoyable. Um, you know, I'll uh, really you know, embrace them highlights probably in a couple of years down the track when um, I get to look back at, at my career and see what I've achieved. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a bit emotional seeing being up here, but, um, you know, something that I'm very proud of and, you know, I'm happy to see everyone support me. Yeah, it's, um, to tell you the truth, I didn't think it would be like this. Um, you know, it's, um, it's overwhelming, um, you know. I, Got a, I can see a lot of family and friends, and you know, it's, uh, I really thank them for for supporting me and coming coming here today. And you know, just uh, really goes to show that you know, I've got a lot of support around here, and you know, I'm very thankful. And um, you know, I love everyone for coming today. Nathan, you mentioned you want to you know, help young people, young Indigenous people, realise their dreams. What would be the message you, you'd give to them that you've learned? I uh, just never give up, man. Uh, you know, I've, you know, you're going to face adversity out there, and you know, um, life throws you in some tough situations, and you just got to overcome them. And um, you know, I've been through a couple of tough roads, and you know, I can 
help them get get from them and you know, go around them. Sorry, is it mixed emotions given Souths are on the cusp of something special? Maybe in a week's time. Oh, mate, it's, um, it's a great time. Um, you know, I'm just here to support the boys no matter what. Um, you know, I'm still part of the squad. Um, might not be in the 17, but you know, I'm, I'm a South Sydney player, part of the 25-man squad, and you know, we're all one group, and you know, we're there to do the one thing together. Um, favorite try, yeah. When will you look back at the screen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow, well, not too sure. Yeah, I can't really remember. Probably um, scoring my fifth try. That was probably one of the highlights. Yeah. Counting my fingers, counting the five tries on my fingers there, yeah, so. Michael, how difficult was it to leave Nathan out early this year, I suppose, and make that change with the new top players coming through? For me, I'm, I'm very humbled to be able to actually coach Nathan. Uh, you know, it's been three years that I've been able to know Nathan. And to watch him grow just in my time, uh, you know, I'm very, very proud of him. And, you know, proud to actually be a part of his life. Uh, you know, he was very, very quiet, I suppose, when we first turned up, and uh, Nathan um, has really become a real strong leader amongst us as a team and us as people. You know, I've sort of seen him really, really quiet in meetings when I first arrived, uh, talking up about what we need to do right now at this moment in the, in the year. So um, I, I think Nathan, you know, he's going to propel himself into something very special as he keeps moving forward because of the things he's gone through, and he's very much a part of what we're doing right now. You've got to pick the team, the best team you think is going to win a game, but it must have been difficult to replace the top legend. Um, yeah, well, he's, he's very much a part of it now. Uh, you know, I guess you fit 17 into a squad uh, when they run out, but Nathan's very much a part of whoever goes out in the field. So for us, uh, you know, he's, he's been around the train, he's got a smile on his face, and, and the players really appreciate you know, what he's doing at the moment. And he's a part of everything we've been doing. What about career highlight, mate? Um, probably just putting a on the red and green jump at the foot for the first time, making my NRL debut um, back in 2002. So, um, you know, nothing more proud of than putting on that jumper for the first time, um, especially being a young kid from around Waterloo Redfern growing up supporting the team and to have that opportunity and, um, you know, made my dreams come true. So that was more of it, that was more important to you than the origin? Well, I guess so. <laughs> if you want to put it that way. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. When, you know, when you were playing for Noah and Shane came to yeah. you, were offered to come back to Redfern, was that an easy decision? Was it a no-brainer for you? Oh, it was pretty much a no-brainer. Um, you know, the decision for me to leave South back in um, 2003 was tough, but um, I had two two great years at Cronulla, uh, made me mature as a person, as a player, and for that offer to come back to South Sydney, um, you know, it was, um, it was definitely a no-brainer, and, you know, it's something that I look back and it's really changed my career, and, you know, going forward, and, it's um, really helped me. It's just been uh, sorry. It's been a, it's been a really tough ten years for us, and uh, I think that uh, I, I really mean it. That if if Nathan and uh, and Sato and some of the guys hadn't stuck at the time, I'm not sure we'd be, we'd be today. Um, it is emotional for me. I, I probably shouldn't do this, but uh, from my point of view, uh, I've always been really close to Nathan and Sato. Maybe he hasn't thought so sometimes. We have a little discussions in my office over a few things. But uh, the reality is he is South Sydney. The fact that, uh, you know, pulling on that jersey means everything to him was very important because at the time, in 2005, it wasn't necessarily the case for a lot of people. Um, and I think that what really happened out of all that is that Nathan, you know, we got a real understanding of what, what the importance of Nathan and the importance of South Sydney to the Redfern District. Uh, and, and I think it was this morning of the way we felt with South Cares and what we've tried to do with in, Indigenous health and employment since then with Solly Belair and the crew, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I've got no doubt that uh, that sort of legacy assisted us in, in bringing Greg Inglis to the club as well. So at the end of the day, it, it is an emotional day for everybody, but um, I, I think the main thing is that, that the hardest thing was for Nathan to make the decision himself, uh, and it was always his decision. Uh, and, and from a club's point of view, all we want to do is support him, him and Shane and and, uh, and, the, and his management about what he wants to achieve with his foundation, which I think can be can be great. Richard, it sounds like the, uh, over the years when he was playing really well in, in what was maybe a poorly performed team, what, how much was the interest from other clubs? How always, always, and uh, you know it was it was funny. Um, they always they always approached Nathan from different sources, and 
he had a few changes in management in the early days, Nate, didn't we, mate? We went to manage uh, on the way through. Um, but he always came to us first and talked to us about it. And, and yeah, he never wanted to leave. You can always work out some way of keeping a player when they don't want to leave. Uh, he never wanted to leave. Some players tell you they don't want to leave, but they just want more money. Nathan was never that guy. Um, so, yeah, so it's just worked out really well for us. And, and to be fair, he, he created an ethos which, uh, in the club, which we probably didn't have. And, uh, you know, really what Madge has done in the last three years and creating the culture that he has a winning culture has been, uh, you know, was, has been a fantastic step forward from what Nathan and Sato really created. Nathan, when did you decide that you could play against this club? Uh, it was pretty pretty clear to me after leaving back in 2004 and five that um, you know I'd, I didn't want to leave the club again and you know play against the, the mighty rabbits so um, you know it was always going to be tough to try and play against us so I'd never wanted to leave my heart's always been here and you know it's going to be here till the day I die. Yeah, it's um, definitely incredible. Um, back from when I started back in 2002, um, you know, we won three games, I think, something like like that. Um, you know, we've been I've gone from a non-competitive team to a team that's competing for an NRL Premiership. So um, over that span of my 13, uh, 11 years here, um, you know, we've been able to acquire um, players such as Sam Burgess, Greg Inglis. Um, they're the top players that you know uh, the best in the business and. You know, to, for South to acquire them kind of players is um, goes to show how much the club has gone forward. How do you hope this sort of announcement inspires the players to the weekend's game? Oh, I'm sure it will. I mean, uh, Nathan's a big part of uh, where we are right now, so you know anything that uh, Nathan's done, which has always been about the team, and we're really looking forward to uh, you know, Nathan being around the boys all the time. I just want to ask about the weekend. If you've got a guy coming back chicken wing tackle uh, Josh Reynolds, I'm sorry, Josh Jackson obviously avoided suspension for a similar incident. Do you have a bit of Mate, can I, can I just jump in on that? Really, it's about Nathan today. Yesterday, was a press yeah. conference about Madge and on Monday, and really, it's about Nathan Merritt and his foundation today, James, so I appreciate it if we can just sort of stick to that and you can ask those questions at the conferences around that. Did you have a question about the foundation? Well, Nate's just talking to his partnership and his family at the moment. There's a bit of a hiatus um, at the end of the season. He's got a season to finish. Um, and then as, as they do that, they'll launch. He'll launch when, when he's ready. Um, uh, that they've, they know the recipe of this and how successful it can be. We know that we've got the buy-in from NRL and South and um, a, a lot of the corporates. And it will be a game-changer in the industry. And um, it'll help a lot of athletes. And Nate Merritt's name will be something that will be synonymous with successful athletes um, indigenous and non-indigenous people, so it is a very good product which you'll, you'll, you'll hear about soon. Greg, just one from you, uh, can you just expand a little bit on what Nathan means to you here and how you know, his influence got you to the club as others have spoken on? Yeah, I know Nathan uh, pretty much since I started and you know, he's pretty much one of the draw cards that drew, that drew me here. Um, so, you know, he's a like you said, he is pretty much South Sydney Rabbitohs. Um, he grew up in the area, he's come in this area and you know, he's just going to show throughout the years that he's been here that he's all about the team. And so, you know, it's one of the main reasons why I came here because I wanted to play alongside this bloke. Um, and, you know, it's uh, like you said before, all careers got to come to at some stage and, you know, he's decided to put his boots up in the issue. What was his mood around like the club when he wasn't making the 17? Oh, he's still upbeat. Um, like I said, he was. Um, <laughs> and the you know, There was times <laughs> where he was uh, disappointed, but you know, at the end of the day, he was all about the team, and that's um, that's the kind of bloke he is. John, how much of an influence was he on you? Like Richo spoke about the two of you sort of hanging tough during those dark periods when maybe you could have gone to another club and experienced success earlier. What influence did Nathan have on you? Yeah, a lot. You know. I'd, you know, back then I was wasn't the most consistent player, and I'd just throw the ball anywhere, and he'll be there to catch it. I think, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'd be on the left wing and score a try on the on the right. You know, so um, you know he's a champion bloke. All the boys love him, and um, you know his, his try scoring record speaks for itself. And um, you know, I'm very proud of what he's done in the game. How, how happy were you that night, Tenor? For him? Yeah, when you got that, what did it mean? 
yeah, I was, I was, you know, very stoked for him. Um, you know, to get that record, it's, um, you know, some some kind of feat, and um, doesn't go to a more deserving bloke. So, um, yeah, just proud of him, everything you've done. So, how important was Nathan in terms of holding the club together in that sort of time, 20 years, really worst Oh, very important. He was the only one that was scoring tries for us. Hard to fit. Back in 06 when he got the um, got the most tries, we only won three games all year, so um, <clears throat> that's some sort of you know record there. So you know, like I said, he's just he's a champion bloke. Everyone loves him, and you know, I'm just proud of what he's done. Okay, guys. Well, thanks very much for coming along today. We really appreciate you showing your support.